All right, welcome to the Church Dropout Podcast. My name is Alan. I am the host, and I'm joined by Lisa. And we are live. Yes, we are. We're live. We are. We are live. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, this is what our third live. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, no, is it our third? Yes, yeah, our third. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, it is our third. I think we. Yeah, it's our third live. Okay. And okay. um, and yeah, so we're glad to be here. So this can go one of two ways. This can be great, or this could be a train wreck. This will be great. It'll be great. It's going to be whatever it is. Okay. Pretty much. It's going to be what it's going to be. It's going to be what it's going to be. Yes. But we thank you all for joining. If you if you don't mind, do me a favor. Just if you are listening now, put a thumbs up or, or just put I can hear well or something in the chat to say that you can actually hear so that we can make sure the volume is straight mm-hmm. and make sure we're moving in the right direction. So just a couple housekeeping things before we actually get into the video. If you have not already, please like, rate, and subscribe wherever you're listening to this podcast at. We appreciate it. We really do appreciate your listenership. We don't take that for granted. Um, share. You know, share the page. I'm not sure what's going on with the YouTube algorithm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, still learning YouTube, but we need your help. We need you to push the page out there so that we can grow and get more content, uh, get more viewership and all of that good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you can donate. You know, uh, you can support the channel in multiple ways. Like I said, you can do that by one, referring us somewhere else to a friend, letting people know that the channel is here. What you said no for? No, I didn't like, no. no. <laughs> like, um, and uh, yeah, so you could tell somebody else about the channel, all of that good stuff. Um, but you can also donate by super chats to the channel. You can super chat us, which would be great if you decide to do that. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we'd appreciate it. You know, anything you can do, we'd uh, definitely appreciate it. Um, you know, if you have a question, or uh, or anything like that, and you do type it in the um, in the uh, chat. Uh, put a Q in front of it. That's what Lisa likes, so that we can actually see uh, the comments mm-hmm. uh, or the questions and separate those from the comments. Right. We'll try to get back to it every now and again as comments come in and stuff like that. Hey, we're new at this, right? So be gentle. Yes. You know, don't don't beat us up too bad. <laughs> Right. Um, but put a cue in front of your question so we know that you're asking a question. Uh, we'll try to have a little bit of a dialogue at the end with, you know, interact with some of those questions and different things of that sort, um, you know, at the end. Um, and please, as always, honestly, keep the chat respectful. Yeah. You know, we can respectfully agree to disagree. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't have to do that in a non loving way. That's right. Right. We can do that in a loving way. You know, and so if you don't, you'll be ejected, period. You'll be ejected, you'll be reported as YouTube spam, and your YouTube app will be deleted immediately (laughs) from your phone. Oh, you got you got the power to do all that. Yeah, I talked to uh, James YouTube. He's the head of YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah, we talk. He's on speed dial. (laughs) So, um, but yeah, just keep it keep it respectful. So before we get into the content, we are going to talk about uh, these comments that John MacArthur made, and he was called out by a black pastor. Mm-hmm. We'll talk a little bit about that today. We're going to read through his response. But before we get there, I did put a little poll out. Oh, let me say this too. I know I had put initially that we were going to do the uh, live stream on Saturday, but mm-hmm. then I changed it to tonight because we got kids. Mm-hmm. So, and uh, Lisa vetoed. Yes. And Lisa said, no, no, <laughs> no, brother. <laughs> I think it'll be fun to hang out and do this on a Friday night. Like, yeah. You know so, what I mean? So we might just make this a Friday night thing. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a little bit mo- more about what we're going to do our next um, live on uh, next week at the end of today's show. So uh, that's it for the housekeeping. I did do a poll and um, in preparation for this, didn't get a whole lot of response because it was rather short. I, I put it out there this morning, but I'm going to put the other poll out very soon mm-hmm. so that you know we can get as much feedback as possible. So the poll that I did put out was um, related to obviously the topic, Mm -hmm. is racism still present in the American church? Mm -hmm. Is racism still present in the American church? And it's interesting because you wouldn't think we need to ask that question right today, right? right? We've had a black president. Right. Yeah. So all of the issues are solved. (laughs) 
<laughs> right? So they say. So they say, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, um, you know, we've come a long way, mm-hmm. but are there still issues within the church right. as it relates to race? And out of those who voted, 89% said yes, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And... 11% said unsure, or they mm-hmm. said unsure, or it's complicated. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. I respect that. Yeah, definitely. And 0% said no. Yeah, 0% said no, mm-hmm. you know, from those who've taken the the poll. Mm-hmm. And I think that's telling. Yeah. You know, um, I do think that race is a very touchy topic as it relates to the church. I don't think as Christians, we do a good job of talking through race. I know it's something that you know, causes a lot of vitriol on either side. Right. Uh, nobody wants to feel like a racist. Some people do, I guess. Right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know. Um, you know. You know. But uh, nobody wants to feel like uh, you know a racist, or it's just a touchy conversation. It's yeah. one of those things that um, you know that really you bring up at a dinner table, and somebody's going to get up and leave yeah. at some particular point. So I understand it's a sensitive topic. Yeah. But I think it's an important topic. It is. It's it a very is. important topic. Yeah. Um, and it needs to be talked about, especially as it relates to the church. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to keep this comment. I mean, I'm going to keep the uh, poll up just so we can get more. And then we may do a listener comment video based upon it. Uh, one person did uh, do a uh, have a comment on that, but I'll read it. I'll read it later on. Okay. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, so most people feel like there's still racism in the church. Mm-hmm. Why do we pause? Why do I, you know, why do I pause like that? You know? I, I don't know. That, yes. I, I think that's a. That's I think a, I'm trying to gather my next thought or trying to roll into the next segment. Wow, and okay. Just naturally pause. Okay. I told you this is either going to go one or two ways. It's going to be great or it's going to be a train wreck. And I'm prepared for both. <laughs> um, it will not be deleted, though. Okay, good. That's a promise. Yes. Okay. Good. I won't delete it. I don't even know if it's up. So, <laughs> hey, you know what I mean? So it might not even go live. <laughs> so. Um, so why is this an important conversation? Mm-hmm. Well, first, let me do this. Let me, let me do this. Let's talk a little bit about who Charlie Dates is. And, um, and then we'll talk about why this conversation matters, right? So Charlie Dates, Reverend Dr. Mm-hmm. Charlie Dates uh, is a pastor, black pastor, um, who pastors two historically black churches. I don't know how all that works. Mm-hmm. Um, and I believe that he's had some interaction with MacArthur, at least through some conferences and different things of that sort. Mm-hmm. Um, may even fall into that theological camp of mm-hmm. a reformed. Mm-hmm. Um, but at least he has uh, gleaned from MacArthur with commentaries and different things of that sort and, yeah. you know, used his stuff. And then he, he went to a conference on exegetical preaching, mm-hmm. which is just preaching in a certain style yeah. um, that MacArthur uh, was at mm-hmm. and spoke at, mm-hmm. or maybe even held at, you know, MacArthur's church. Mm-hmm. And so he felt ne- it necessary to address this comment, mm. this situation, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. as a black pastor who pastors in a predominantly black community, yeah. um, these comments have some weight. Right. If you don't know who John MacArthur is in evangelicalism, you've been asleep. Mm-hmm. Um now I'm not saying that, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm being a little bit facetious, but John MacArthur is a big voice. Mm-hmm. He's a big voice in evangelicalism. Um, he's been labeled by some the evangelical pope mm. um, because he just carries that much weight. Mm-hmm. People really, 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 really value John MacArthur's opinion. Mm. And truthfully, when I first became a Christian, um, I heard him on the radio. Had yeah. nothing, had didn't have any idea about his theology or anything like that. Mm-hmm. He was teaching the Bible. I was new to this. Yeah. I remember listening to Grace to You. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he was just walking through the scriptures, you mm-hmm. know, him and Jay Vernon McGee, you know, back in the day, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, Jay Vernon, uh-huh. you know, old JV, <laughs> you know. And so, um, so yeah, you know, John MacArthur's a big voice. And mm-hmm. I think that's one reason why this conversation matters. Yeah. Is because a person that has that much influence saying something like this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, has has the ability to influence others yes. in a negative way, influence yes. the church in a negative way, yeah. and not only influence those who are in the house of God in the church, yeah. also influence those who are listening outside of the church. I've even heard some other individuals who are not even Christian comment mm. on this mm-hmm. and point at the church uh, in relation to this. Mm. And so it's it's a big deal. Yeah, it's a big deal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. And um, and so you know 
that's one reason mm-hmm. it matters. But mm-hmm. there's a couple more reasons why I think this matters. I think this exposes uh, the heart, not only of John MacArthur, mm-hmm. but I think it exposes the heart of evangelicalism today. Mm. Right? It, yeah. it exposes, you know, or I, I guess I should say white evangelicalism. Mm-hmm. And I know people hate that term, that term mm-hmm. of having to put white or a designation before evangelicalism or whatever. Right. But this comment shows that right. we're still very much divided when it yeah. comes to color yeah. and race yeah. when it you know when it comes to the church today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And this really exposes the heart of white evangelicalism. Now I know that's a blanket statement, mm-hmm. but when I'm talking about evangelicalism or white evangelicalism, I'm talking about that system of evangelicalism that's being pushed today. Now, evangelical meant something totally different 20 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, maybe even a little bit longer than that. But mm-hmm. as things have changed, as Christianity has become more politicized, as um, certain things have happened within the Christian culture mm-hmm. of church, mm-hmm. evangelicalism really means to be white evangelical. It's mm-hmm. a system. Mm-hmm. It's a style. Mm-hmm. It's a thought process, an understanding. It's mm-hmm. a way of looking at scripture. It's a way of looking at the church. Mm-hmm. It really is its own system. And so this really exposes the heart of that, yeah. right? And, mm-hmm. and it really just shows that there is a huge divide. It also shows that if you're a black Christian mm-hmm. and you care about things like social justice mm-hmm. and you care about uh, r- race mm-hmm. and things that are racial and addressing those things, mm-hmm. then you might be labeled a non-Christian mm. or somebody who's not faithful mm-hmm. to the gospel, Wow. Right. right. And uh, that's an unfair characterization. Mm-hmm. It's a not. It's a. It's a lie. Yeah. It's not true. Right. But this sets up this juxtaposition that people who think differently mm-hmm. than one crowd, because they don't see things theologically the same, mm-hmm. they that you're not a Christian. Yeah. You. This went to the extreme. Mm. Now, again, we know. Um, we know Martin Luther King wasn't perfect. Yep. Nobody claimed that. Right. And he'll point to that, and I'm not going to get ahead of myself, Mm -hmm. so I'm already starting to feel like, you know... Getting riled up, Getting riled up, you know what I mean? I might have to get back into character. Okay. Um, Yeah, and so, um, but yeah, you know, it it just really shows the heart of evangelicalism today, and it shows that, you know, there's some major differences here in how we think about the gospel. Now, me personally, and I'm going to say some other things Mm -hmm. as to what this shows, but this was huge for me, you know, personally. When I was Mm -hmm. planting a church... I was in a predominantly white community. Mm -hmm. Um, I've shared bits of this story, but there was just a lot of differences in how we seen the community, how we seen partnering, how we seen ministering to people. Mm -hmm. Uh, There was a lot of conversations uh, that were hidden behind the gospel, Mm -hmm. but really had to do with culture. It Mm -hmm. had to do with, well, you know, that's not the way you do things. This Mm -hmm. is the biblical way of doing things. But what they were really expressing was their culture. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm talking about being tied to the community, being contextual. Yeah. Okay. I'm not talking about capitulation to the culture. I'm talking about uh, being uh, contextualizing, incarnational ministry, what Jesus did. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, there wasn't much room for that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And... Um, it was hard to have those conversations, right? To fight for the validity of how you think through some of these processes that are different than the dominant culture in that particular setting. Mm-hmm. And so, hearing something like this, it 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 angers me. Yeah. It 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 reminds me of some of the struggles that that have been there. Mm-hmm. And truthfully, I'm just gonna be. I'm gonna keep it 100. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I was told. You know, I was told by some of my mentors mm-hmm. who who were black, mm-hmm. and they were just like, "Hey, we are all for racial reconciliation. Mm-hmm. We are all for um, uh, mono, not mono. I'll say mono ethnic. We are all for <laughs> ethnic. Uh, what's that called? Multi. Yeah, multi ethnic uh-huh. ministry. There mm-hmm. you go. Mm-hmm. I didn't know what I was talking about. <laughs> But I got but you. they were like we're we're all for that. Yeah. But they were also saying like be careful. Yeah. Right. Because they may not be thinking, and I, they may not be thinking the same way that you're thinking about mm-hmm. these things. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it's a real big thing. It's a real big thing. So, um, so again, it shows that we're not where we think we are. Mm-hmm. Right. We thought there was progress, um, and there has been some progress. Right. But we're not where we think we are. Right. 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 And we'll talk about this. Uh, at least I'll, I'll talk about this at some point of just, you know, church planting and different things of that sort. Mm-hmm. Some of those experiences of having to walk through that, mm-hmm. that whole multi-ethnic 
movement that happened, not the Promise Keepers one 25, 30 years ago. I'm mm-hmm. talking about the latest one. There was another one that was really large where everybody was like, hey, we got to integrate Brian Loritz. All these people were at the forefront of this. Mm-hmm. Um, it didn't work. Mm-hmm. It didn't work. And um, and so this is the reason why, because there really wasn't reconciliation. But that that's another subject. Yes, I'm going to say? No. Um, this also shows that there's an unwillingness to face um, not only America's dark past, but the church's dark past, mm. right? Mm. So at the heart of the civil, well, first, when we look at slavery, yeah, you know, and he points this out, slaveholders were Christians. A lot of them were, were Christians, mm-hmm. held high theology, but at the same time were, had a low theology in terms of how that theology was lived out before man, mm-hmm. right? Um, and then when you move into the civil rights era, era mm-hmm. you had Christians, right, mm-hmm. who were in seminaries, who were, you know, in churches, pastoring, mm-hmm. learning, and did not engage the fight, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. They gave in to culture, right. stayed quiet. Again, Charlie Dates mentioned some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but there was no fight from white evangelicals in that movement, or very little fight. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And, you know, the sad part is, is this is just from what I've read in this. Mm-hmm. Could be different. Somebody could prove me wrong here. But more white Catholics got involved in Protestants when it came to the civil rights movement. Mm-hmm. You know, they, mm-hmm. they, 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 they did, you know, did more embracing within that particular uh, time than mm-hmm. Protestant pastors did mm-hmm. during that time. Mm-hmm. So there's a deep history of race. Uh, there's a deep history of racism that the church has not fully reckoned with, where it failed. And I'm mm-hmm. talking about, not talking about buildings, we're talking about the people of God, where right. we didn't address this global mm-hmm. and local mm-hmm. issue that was happening here in the Americas. We did not address it. Yeah, We did not, I'm speaking to generalizations, but we did not repent for it. Mm-hmm. We did not repair the relationships. We did not exchange power. There, there was no real change other than, yeah, we acknowledge, but hey, we're going to let you sit at our table. Mm. But the problem is that's your table. Right. Okay. Right. right? right. It, you know, it's easy to allow people to sit at your table when you're not giving them any power. Mm. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so, so there's a rich history yeah. there uh, and an unwillingness to face the dark past. There's also, this also shows that there's an unwillingness to engage in in racial injustice, mm. um, I firmly believe people are hiding behind their theological positions mm. to not engage in the fight when it comes to racial justice here. And by racial, obviously I'm well, and B Y. Yes, I got racial. You. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, double entendres. <laughs> so, uh, what I mean by that is is I'm not, I am primarily talking about black because this has to do with black folks, mm-hmm. but Christians have not really engaged in any racial injustices that have happened. Mm. And we've talked about this personally, you and I, just about, about uh, immigrants or individuals who are here. How has the church dealt with that, right? Refugees and mm-hmm. stuff like this. We've, mm-hmm. hi- we've hid behind our political mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. V- viewpoint right. and have not engaged from our kingdom ethic, mm-hmm. right? And mm-hmm. so- so this is this is not something that's just common in the black community. This is common in multiple communities, mm-hmm. right? But if we can't deal what has happened in our own house, mm-hmm. right? Like this is something that has happened in America's house. Mm-hmm. You, you see what I'm saying? Yeah. And it needs to heal here. Yeah, we need to. So so this just shows that there's an unwillingness to even engage in social. Uh, change. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, I think that's because we hide behind our theological reasonings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why it's an important discussion. And uh, one last thing that just came to my mind just now, just now, this marginalizes black folks within evangelicalism. And it, 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 it's, it almost tells (laughs) How do I say this without it? I'm just talking here. I haven't processed this. Mm-hmm. They always find flaws in our heroes, mm-hmm. right? Like, right. The, like you know, they're always tearing down our heroes, mm-hmm. right? Or individuals that have had 
major influence or have done great good in the community, um, and especially in this sense. Mm -hmm. uh, what Martin Luther King stood behind was a gospel understanding of people. Yeah. And this is them tearing down the face of someone who is valued in the black community as a hero, mm -hmm. as an individual, as an example, as someone we point to today and we tell our kids, listen, you are standing on the back of individuals who've given their life so you have these rights. Right. So your humanity could be respected. And you're just going to nonchalantly tear that down. Mm. With, with with no wisdom. Yeah. Just just tear it down. Mm -hmm. Right? You're right. I, I just don't that, that that just boils my blood. Oh yeah. Right? Yeah. And um and so so anyway, you know, those are some reasons why I think this is an important conversation because it's meaningful. Yeah. I think it's right for today. I think this again exposes some things that the church needs to fix. I think this also exposes the fact that the church has been political and not yeah. spiritual, yeah. that we're not dealing with these issues that are really theological issues that play themselves out in the political space. We're not dealing with them as spiritual issues, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. We're big enough to call people to repentance, but we're not big enough to repent ourselves. Yeah. He's not said anything about this. He's not come back and, and corrected it. Mm -hmm. He's not said, you know what, maybe it was insensitive timing. He hasn't said anything mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. So he doesn't even care about the people who are offended by what he says. Doesn't mean that you have to agree. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, so... Well, we're going to go ahead and get into it then. We're going to get into it and Let's say, and so... It. um. So before we play the video, I want to give a little bit of context here, not from my mouth, because you're looking at me like, boy, you about to go on another one again. <laughs> um, you, you know, Lisa be looking at me. She just be giving me that look. She give me that 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 stank eye. No, I do not. You know. Um, so I, I do want to give a little bit of context. I want to play a couple videos because mm -hmm. I think when Charlie Dates was talking about this, he had these things in mind. Okay. And then I'll, I'll kind of pull them out in the context of the letter itself. Got it. But I think these are the things, obviously, one, the comment that he made about Martin Luther King, but there's another comment that he made some time back mm -hmm. in his younger years mm -hmm. uh, about slavery. And oh. I think the, both of the, these things are in place. So I want to play these for context, mm -hmm. you know, and then we'll get into reading the letter. All right. Okay, here we go. Going on a couple of years ago, and it literally put them out of existence. I was thinking, it was a year later, they did the same thing for Martin Luther King, who was not a Christian at all, whose life was immoral. I'm not saying he didn't do some social good, and I've always been glad that he was a pacifist or he could have started a real revolution. But you don't, you don't honor a non-believer um, who misrepresented everything about Christ and the gospel in an organization alongside honoring somebody like R.C. Sproul. This was a symptom of the impact of the woke movement that basically displaced that whole organization. That was really, it was over after that. Okay, so that was the first clip, and mm -hmm. I plan on playing on both of them consecutively, but there's a couple things there we need to mention. Mm -hmm. So just for context, he's talking about two movements that were happening, the Gospel Coalition, Together for Christ, which was another movement that was happening. He says mm -hmm. they've gone woke. Mm -hmm. And the reason why they've gone woke is because one year they honored R.C. Sproul, who was mm -hmm. a theologian, mm -hmm. who's passed away. They honored him as mm -hmm. a theologian. The next year they honored Martin Luther King. Mm. And he's saying, you're honoring this not, he's just going off like, mm -hmm. You just honored R.C. Sproul. Mm -hmm. You should not have honored Martin Luther King. Wow. Right? Mm -hmm. So he's, you know, putting these two into, pinning these two individuals together in mm -hmm. the work that they've done mm -hmm. in life. And, and again, and then he mentions this woke agenda. Mm -hmm. That's weaponizing theology, again, yeah. and is standing behind a theological position to dismiss someone who's done more work in, in terms of, listen, he's given his life. Yeah. And I can't remember any of these guys who've given their life for any of this hmm. in that same way. Yeah. Right? right? But but again, did, yeah. Things my light like, just went on. One of my so. lights just went on. <laughs> Lord. <laughs> right? So, you know, because you know, people would be spiritualizing it. You know, they'll say, like, 
I mean, that was the Lord saying he agreed. So you'll never say <laughs> that means he disagreed. Right, you know what right. I'm saying? So, so anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's kind of the context there, right? Mm -hmm. So Martin Luther King is not a Christian at all. You guys mm -hmm. honored him, and now you're part of a woke political movement, mm -hmm. not a theological, you know, this political movement. So I think we're hiding behind our theology in order to demean, dismiss, mm -hmm. and push someone aside who's demonstrated the work of gospel in a way that none of these guys have, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so here's video number two. It's a little strange that um, we have such an aversion to slavery uh, because historically there have been abuses, you know, there have been abuses in marriage. We don't have an aversion to marriage, particularly, because there have been abuses. So to throw out slavery as a concept simply because there have been abuses, I think, is to miss the point. In any kind of human relationship, there can be abuses. There can also be benefits for many people, poor people, perhaps people who weren't educated, perhaps people who had no other opportunity, working for a gentle, caring, loving master was the best of all possible worlds. If you had the right master, everything was taken care of. So we have to go back and take a more honest look at slavery and understand that God has, in a sense, legitimized it when it's handled correctly. Slavery is not objectionable if you have the right master. It's the perfect scenario. Mm. Yeah, so let me drink Ooh, some. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Water. Um, Lisa. Wow. Lisa almost fell down, y'all. Oh, yeah. My Pretty bad. If you had the right master. If you have the right master. Really? Yeah, th this is just, if it wasn't so sad, it'd be funny. I'm telling you. You, you understand what I'm saying? That yeah. we can reason mm -hmm. our way mm -hmm. into believing that slavery. Mm is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Now, I I was going to say, I understand. The point that he's trying to make mm -hmm. is that there are people who cannot make it in society without the help of others. Mm -hmm. so that but means slavery... You them your slave? Right. See, that that's what I'm saying. And then he re equates slavery to marriage. Mm. Oh, you know, there's no perfect marriages. Do we do away with marriages? Mm. Oh, you know, there's no perfect... There's not, not a perfect slavery, do we... Do we do away with slavery? That's the same rhetoric that slaveholders argued. Oh, we're helping them. Mm -hmm. We're doing the right Christian thing by giving these people a life that they... Do you see what I'm mm -hmm. saying here? Yeah. And this is what I think is being addressed. And this is the concern. Now, John MacArthur said that some time back. Yeah. And yet he still has maintained this position of stature. Mm -hmm. He still has maintained this... Um, this uh, He's maintained this uh, pedestal of mm -hmm. being this great man, theologian. Now, listen, people make mistakes. People say things. People do things. We've all made it. I I'm not saying that at all. Like, I'm not saying that we should hold somebody accountable uh, for the rest of their lives for certain things that they've done. Mm -hmm. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Lord, for the grace that you've given me. And you've like, nobody's saying that. Right. But the reality is, is that these things have been overlooked for some time. Mm -hmm. It's been overlooked. Yeah. And we still have given honor to, to to this person and allowed that person to say these things mm -hmm. and not be checked for it, mm. right? And not, and, and, so anyway, so I just wanted to put those two things in context as we read this letter from Charlie, uh, Reverend Doctor, uh, Pastor, Brother, because uh, that's how we do it in the, in the black church, right? Reverend Doctor, Pastor, Brother, Uncle, Son, Cousin, <laughs> Second Mama, Daddy, Friend. Okay. Okay. Um, I know. I'm just. I don't know. I I, I did have it's an energy Friday drink. Friday night. I had an energy oh, drink. <laughs> so anyway, um, so we're gonna play this. Okay. And I mean, we're gonna read this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And um, we'll comment uh in there. Uh, let me just get this up real quick, so so I'm ready to go. And while he's doing that, just sure. a reminder, anybody, if you guys have comments that you want to mm -hmm. ask, or if you have questions, I'm sorry, that for us, then just put a question mark, and we will answer those questions for you. Yeah. Put the and question you, mark in front of the question, so we know. Oh, you want a question mark in front of the question. I said a Q. Oh, a Q. Hey, Q, no, question listen, mark. Listen to Lisa. <laughs> put a, put a, uh, a, a Q. That's good. And, um, and also like. Mm -hmm. subscribe if you have not already mm -hmm. and if you want to throw us a little bit of love you can also uh, super chat us if you feel uh, so led to do so so we're going to walk through this letter again this is the letter from charlie dates you can find it in multiple places if you go to julieroyce.com 
um, you know, you can find it there. It's posted on her website. She's one of the individuals who covered it as well. Um, this is an open letter to Dr. John MacArthur. He also had some comments where he came for John MacArthur, too. He was just like, listen, if you haven't stood on the front lines, pretty much, if you haven't stood on the front lines of doing this, then you you need not be talking about this. Um, but anyway, so so this is his formal letter mm -hmm. to uh, Dr. John MacArthur. So go ahead, Lise. All right. It says, Dr. Charlie Dates, open letter to John MacArthur. We, the undersigned, regret that we have to write you this way. But we sense that this is the only way to address the egregious wrong that you and those like you have yet again inflicted on black Christians in America. For years, we have read your commentaries, considered your scholarship and tried to reason with your theological propositions. OK, so I, I think this is where he's kind of getting into, you know, there's context here mm -hmm. with some of the things that John MacArthur has said, some of the relationships uh, that uh, that he has uh, with certain theologians, some mm -hmm. people that are close to him in his camp um, have uh, made comments. And and so, you know, we, we've tried to reason with these theological propositions, these things that you've said. We're, mm -hmm. You know, we've we've given some room here, some balance. We've mm -hmm. tried to think through these things, knowing who you are, knowing what you stand for. Yeah. Right? Undoubtedly, you, Mr. MacArthur, have made significant and helpful contributions to the reading and understanding of scripture for our present age. How ironic it now feels to write to you, a teacher, a word of correction. We hope that you will find within this missive a patient and reasonable rebuttal for your unwise and ill-timed slander of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Okay, now he's using some very strong language here, mm -hmm. and he's being very intentional about mm -hmm. some of the things that he's saying. Mm -hmm. go, go back down just one bit. Even. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Um, so, one, I think it's very intentional to say Reverend Dr. Martin mm -hmm. Luther King Jr., right? Mm -hmm. It's it's emphasizing the statement that, no, he is right. a Christian. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before, you know, we have made Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King a public figure to some sense, mm -hmm. but the things that we call speeches were sermons. Mm -hmm. A lot of those things were held in the church. Right. He was talking about these things from the pulpit, right. which is something that does not happen today, mm -hmm. right? In mm -hmm. terms of, I'm not talking about the political. Right. He was he was talking about, hey, a Christian perspective on peace, love, joy, and how we ought to deal with these particular things. But those were, were speeches. But he says here, your unwise and ill-timed slander, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's unwise, as we stated, out, as stated earlier, a man... Why does that need to be said? Mm -hmm. Like, w w for what reason? Right. Yeah. Was it wise to even say it? Yeah. Why go there? What What, what, what were you wishing to gain from that? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And obviously the day that it was set on or the uh, month that it was set in. Mm -hmm. Right? So he said these comments during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. Right? And so it's just unwise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He, you know, um, I, I mean, I'm glad he showed his hand, uh, yeah. to be honest with you. But it... but. The reality is it was unwise and ill-timed. Mm -hmm. You know, the timing of it was was horrible. You yeah. know, the question, I'm not sure what the question is, but again, <laughs> it, it's just unwise and ill-timed. So mm -hmm. let's go, because I could be here all day. <laughs> you were recorded at the Grace Bible Church critiquing evangelical organizations who have honored Dr. King alongside your theological heroes. You said Martin Luther King Jr. was not a Christian at all. And that mm. his life was immoral. I am not saying he did not do some social good. And I have always been glad that he was a pacifist or he could have started a real revolution. But you don't honor a non-believer who is misrepresented everything about Christ and the gospel. And you did this during Black History Month 2024. Yeah. And, and so, again, there has been people who, OK, first, whatever Dr. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. stated was mm -hmm. definitely early, uh, or earlier in his life. I'm not excusing any of that. Yeah. Um, there may have been some questions there concerning his theology and obviously, um, you know, his life. You keep mm -hmm. scrolling up. Um, but he says, uh, you know, Martin Luther King misrepresented everything about Christ and the gospel. Mm -hmm. How about love? Hmm. How about sacrificial love? Yeah. How about laying down your life for your for your brothers yep. and sisters? Yep. Peace. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Joy. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. All the fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Right? See, it, it just, again, this idea that there is a certain group of people, this mm -hmm. theological Gnosticism that takes place within certain camps, that you hold all of the knowledge. Yeah. And how we understand the gospel is the only thing that really matters. Right. And that we're divorcing gospel mm -hmm. from how we live. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter how he lived. It doesn't matter the Christ that he confessed and how that confession caused him to lay himself down for, for a vision that God portrays in, in Revelation 21. Mm -hmm. Right? That's not enough. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So. It's, it's, it's just unbelievable that he didn't say it during Black History Month. Mm -hmm. yeah. These words sound eerily familiar to us. They ring with the same pitch of those slaveholding American preachers from yesteryear who, under a supposed high view of scripture, denigrated an entire people group on the basis of race and ethnicity. Your words reek with the stench of superiority and partiality. They reverberate like a hymn of George Wallace in the tone of J. Edgar Hoover. You are them in postmodern dress. Mm. You are of the ilk of those who, in their theological lineage, won't raise a finger to help black and brown people secure and maintain the right to vote, thereby ensuring a better life on earth, but will lecture us on the way to heaven. So let me just say this real quick. Um, th this has been the hypocrisy of the church um, the fact that we still hold individuals who've owned slaves in high esteem. He's going to name a few of those individuals. Mm -hmm. But the fact that we still honor those individuals simply based on what they say about the gospel mm -hmm. and not how they live Lived the gospel. Yep. You, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so yes, they're slaveholders. And this is, again, this is this selective politicking, mm -hmm. <laughs> this hypocrisy, <laughs> right? Do I need mm -hmm. to get my sunglasses you back out? No, you're good. Right? And so this is the problem, mm -hmm. right, is that we are so concerned with being right yeah. and less concerned with doing, doing right. right. Yeah. We are not called just to believe the gospel. We are called to live the gospel mm -hmm. as a result of believing the gospel. Mm -hmm. If your theology does not, if, if your high theology does not cause you to love, then you don't have a high theology. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. You do not have a high theology if your theology does not cause you to love, mm -hmm. especially those who are different than you. Yeah. You strain at an obscure point of orthodox. <laughs> you strain at an obscure point of orthodoxy while ignoring the weightier matters of the law, like justice and compassion. How ironic it is that you proclaim God's grace under a ministry titled Grace to You, and yet you deny that same grace to people who believe in that same Jesus as Lord, but resist the evil of racism and unrighteousness. How strange it is that you tell a world about our Heavenly Father and yet won't tell the same to a government that denies the very courtesy of equality to black and brown people made in His image. Mm. It is ironic that a man whose ministry is based upon grace can be so graceless. It is also ironic that a man whose entire ministry is founded upon salvation by grace through faith in Christ alone can condemn and provide definitive judgment upon a black man, not by his profession of faith, but by what the FBI said about him. Last time we checked, sin was taken care of at the cross. Girl, you read when inflections and everything, mm -hmm. girl. But 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 listen, to, look at what he says here, right? Mm -hmm. And this is a problem, right? Great, we we believe in grace. We believe that we are saved by grace through faith mm -hmm. in Christ mm -hmm. alone. Yes. Yet, you are judging this man not by his profession, but by his activity. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So then are we adding to the gospel? Right. Right? Right. He's professed faith in Christ and he lived according to that. Mm -hmm. Was he perfect? Absolutely not. Nope. But but here go. Neither was any other person mm -mm. in our in our theological lineage. Yes. That you hold in high esteem. Listen, if you're going to put Martin Luther King out of heaven, mm -hmm. then you need to put them out of heaven too. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mhm. Mm yeah. It is more than ironic 
It is a tragic and irresponsible. It is tragic and irresponsible. We are sorry to say that your argument against Dr. King is theologically inconsistent and biblically errant. Theologically, you fail to measure the fruit born of King's ministry against the vitriol born from your own. Mm. Biblically, you have swallowed whole camels with beams in your own eyes. Mm. We have wondered, what is your real problem with, <laughs> we have wondered. <laughs> you keep moving it. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. We have wondered, what is your real problem with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? That's the question. Mm -hmm. What's the real problem? Yep. With Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. What are we really getting at here? Right. What's yep. the underlining yeah. issue yeah. with Dr. Martin Luther King mm -hmm. Jr.? Mm -hmm. What is the real problem? And I'm and I'm stating that over and over again because again, this points to there are deeper things that have not been uprooted in how we think about this issue of race, mm -hmm. how we think about this issue of social justice, yeah. how we think about what true multi-ethnic communities look like mm -hmm. and what real racial reconciliation looks like in the church, mm -hmm. right? And, yeah. and, and let me say this, that's a gospel issue, right? Mm -hmm. I believe when we, when, when we deny fellowship based upon those principles, we're cutting against the gospel yeah. because the gospel in Christ, he unifies us and makes us one body. So if we push someone out, we're going against what the gospel says. Yeah. In Corinthians, Paul is telling the and, and it, you know again this might be a little bit different for for how some people interpret some of this stuff, but in but in in Corinthians when Paul tells the church to examine themselves to examine the body, mm -hmm. the body that he has in 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 mind there mm -hmm. is the body of Christ. He's mm -hmm. talking about those that you fellowship with. The Corinthians were going and eating food and eating all the food before the people got there. Mm -hmm. They weren't communing together. Mm -hmm. Communion was a meal. They weren't having communion. And he's saying, listen, you guys are eating all this food. You're not leaving anything for anybody else. You're getting drunk. You're doing all these things. Mm -hmm. And he tells them, examine how you sinned against the body, hmm. not just your personal body, yeah. but how you sinned against your brothers and sisters. Yeah, the whole body. So don't take communion yeah. when you've sinned against your brothers and sisters. Go and make fellowship right. Right, right. And then come back and have communion because you're not having communion with the Father mm -hmm. or the Son mm -hmm. if you don't have communion with one another. Right. Right? Mm-hmm. It cuts at the heart of the gospel. It cuts at everything that we're talking about here. So to separate somebody, to say they're in hell, mm -hmm. to separate them mm -hmm. without good reason. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like without, listen, you cannot deny what Martin Luther King Jr. has done. You can't deny that. Nope. Whether, whether you question his morality, whether right. you question all that, that's one thing you can't deny. Right. Yep. He professed, he lived a certain way. Mm -hmm. If there's a question mark, then leave it to be, leave it a question mark. But let's let's just let's just go. I remember hearing you tell the story of your visit to Memphis with Dr. John Perkins the night after Reverend Dr. Martin King's assassination. I remember how you recounted that narrative in front of the nation's largest conference of black pastors committed to biblical exposition. You flashed your street credibility in front of us that night. And now you blaze your actual and original convictions about us and the progress the gospel has brought to our communities. So I'm sorry, babe. I know you're just getting ready to keep going, but I got to say something about this. Mm -hmm. He tells this story of how he had a relationship with John Perkins. And when Martin Luther King was assassinated, he stood in the hotel room or was at the hotel room, that, not when it happened, but after it happened, he mm -hmm. was there and all mm -hmm. of this type stuff. Mm -hmm. This has been written on. They've tried to verify this stuff. They've mm -hmm. tried to do all of this type stuff. That story is even in question. Mm -hmm. And then he's using this at a conference where black pastors are. Mm -hmm. He's using this at a conference where there's mm -hmm. black pastors mm -hmm. to build a bridge mm -hmm. between he himself and these individuals. Yeah. And in that conference, he didn't say anything about what he believes today about Martin Luther King Jr. Right. Why not then? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Why, yeah. why not then? Right. Let alone that the story you told is probably not true. Mm -hmm. And people know that as well, but nobody's even commenting on that. Mm -hmm. See, this is a problem. This is called partiality. This is what the scripture talks about. This is partiality. Mm -hmm. 
When we give this man preference and we treat him differently than we treat other people, we're selective politicking and we're showing partiality in the church. How can you condemn King and not condemn him by his own words? Right. Yep. The last time I checked, dishonesty is a moral failure. Mm. <laughs> Hate is a moral failure. Mm-hmm. Disregard is a moral failure. Pride is a moral failure. Mm. Then you will be judged by the same judgment that you are giving others. Mm hmm. Remember now, it wasn't Billy Graham or W.A. Criswell who helped us litigate the trappings of dignity that matched our humanity. It wasn't Adrian Rogers, R.C. Sproul, or even you who took the beatings, endured the dogs, or challenged a theology that kept black and brown people oppressed. God used the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah, so you guys weren't there. You guys weren't on the front lines. Mm -hmm. Billy Graham was was preaching in stadiums. Mm. He was preaching, ooh. He was preaching in stadiums Mm -hmm. where there was millions of people there. Yeah. While outside of those very stadiums and those very venues, people were being bit by dogs and people were being harassed by the cops. Sprayed with water. People were having to enter into the back door of the very Coliseum that you're preaching at. People Mm. couldn't even go through the right, go through the front door. At the hotels you were staying at, you had you had people who could not even sit at the same table as you. They had to go to the service entrance in the back to get their food. Mm. There was only certain rooms that they could stay in in the Mm -hmm. same hotels that Mm -hmm. you guys stayed in. Mm -hmm. They had to go stay in another hotel. Mm. Nobody was out there. Yeah. Hmm. Nobody, n- nobody else was getting bit by dogs. Right. None of the people who he mentioned here were doing that. Yeah. While Martin Luther King and others were in the fight. Yeah. To preserve the gospel. To preserve the dignity and the right of all human beings who bear the image of God. How can you even? All right, all right let's go. Here is the reality. If King is not in heaven, neither is the slave holding theologian Jonathan Edwards. If King is not in heaven, neither is the anti-Semitic Martin Luther, R.C. Sproul, Cotton Mather, and James Henley Thornwell. Using your logic, if King is not in heaven, I know not on what grounds God will let you in. Absolutely. You know, if King's not in heaven, all these other individuals are not in heaven either. Mm-hmm. Let's just let's just call it what it is. That that that's my bottom line here. Mm-hmm. Is let's just call it what it is then. Yeah. If we're going to make pronouncements about where people are, which which the scripture does not give us any right to do so, especially in this particular case, mm-hmm. then let's just call it what it is. Yeah. Let's hold everybody to the same standard that you're holding him to. Let's just call it what it is. Yeah. Either your statement about King is wrong or your praxis is wrong. Either your statement drips with the words of prejudice and interposition or your theology is vacuous and powerless. One thing is certain. Both cannot coexist. We know what you have done. It is the same gimmick that generations of white fundamentalists have done before you. You have opted to divorce justice from righteousness because it permits you to hate the people God loves. You have separated the call to love God from the command to care for your neighbor. We can only deduce that you've lived long enough to know that black Christian clergy are not wrong in our fight for justice and equality. We can only hope that the germ of superiority and supremacy has not taken full root in your heart. We pray that your love for doctrine will manifest itself in the doctrine of love. That's it right there. You Mm -hmm. can, you can pin that somewhere. Mm -hmm. Your love for doctrine. We can only pray that your love for doctrine will manifest itself in the doctrine of love. Mm -hmm. That's what this is about. Yeah. That that's the heart of this. Right. Right. Which is what was demonstrated by King. Perhaps we should tell you that we are calling on Christian clergy of all colors to stop reading your commentaries, to dislodge themselves from your conferences, and to give your voice no amplification in their teaching until you fight for justice to roll down like a river in America and righteousness like a mighty stream for those who are marginalized. Yep. And that's it. And, you know, there's a little dig there at the end, a little quote from, you know, Dr. Martin Luther King, one of his famous sermons or speeches that he gave. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, the reality is, is that 
it's it's out of place. Yeah. And he's out of step. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he can make a statement like this and not even, as far as I know, mm -hmm. not even consult with brothers and sisters that he has relationships with that may mm -hmm. be offended. Mm -hmm. People who have fought, like John Perkins, whom he mentions, individuals that have been on the front lines mm -hmm. in the fight mm -hmm. with this individual right. on this particular subject, to disregard that during black history, make a pronouncement and a judgment without the wisdom to know that this that your voice is amplified yeah. and is going to affect a lot of people. Yeah. It's just sad. It is. And I'm glad he was called to the carpet. Yeah. And I'm glad someone had the courage to to write him publicly mm -hmm. and to and to also ask for there to be some change. Mm hmm You know? Mm-hmm. You know, so so that's it. That's all that's all we got. Really appreciate you guys tuning in. We're gonna read some comments here or a comment here. Uh let me take a look at what this says. Uh Yeah, so I'm not going to post the comment, but basically it just says that King was heretical and that uh, racism exists in all colors. Hey, listen, you know, King, whether or not King was a, was a heretic or he was heretical in some of his beliefs, okay, we could talk about that. But to say that we're saying that racism does ex exist in all colors is, is a sweeping statement. We know that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we're talking about a specific instance. And the way to deal with an argument like this is not to call out other scenarios yeah is to deal with the scenario that's at hand yeah let's deal let's deal with what john MacArthur said he made a statement that has offended many mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. let's deal with that yeah right yep right and so and again he says uh, to say you're a black christian it is unbiblical okay i'm not going to answer trolls so uh -huh. um you know i, I am a christian mm -hmm. who's black mm-hmm I don't use the designation black Christian, mm -mm. but until there is a Christian mm -hmm. that is not demonstrated in black or white, yes. you got to designate it some way. Yep. And this is what I'm saying. For some reason, we don't believe that there there's a term called white Christian. Right. See, that that's what kills me. Like, right. like that's what I'm saying. That's mm -hmm. why at the beginning I said that evangelicalism today can be categorized yeah. as white Christianity. Yeah. But that designation is not there. I agree with you. I would love to see the church be the church. I mean, that's our whole goal. That's our heart. I would love to see Christians be Christians mm -hmm. and to lose all of that. But but Christianity is not colorless. Mm -hmm. God didn't create a colorless world. He didn't create a colorless community. And in fact, Revelation says there will be people there of all ethnicities. Mm -hmm. It's not uniformity. Right. It's unity. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. we, we find blessing in our differences. Yeah. But we don't X people out in accordance to that. So, right. so again, we appreciate you guys uh, yes. for joining the podcast. We'd love to hear your thoughts yeah. on this. Mm -hmm. um, just a few announcements before we close. Lisa, you got any final words? Um, No, I thought this was really good. Um, You know, I, I give Dr. Charlie dates props. I appreciate him, you know, making this open letter, you know, because, Unfortunately, um, I honestly wish that the open letter came from somebody who, you know, was probably in his camp or, you know, yeah. just saying, hey, what you're doing is not right. What Absolutely. What you said was not right. I love you, brother, but I do need to let you know that what you said was not right. Absolutely. And that's you know? what this is. Because we're supposed to bring unity, not division. And Absolutely. To make a statement like that, I think he was going more towards division. Absolutely. So. I, I agree. And there's a difference, you know, mm -hmm. um, we operate as Christians, we operate in wisdom, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And sometimes wisdom is, is I can, but maybe I shouldn't. Right. And this is one of those times where it was just unwise yeah. and it ended up causing a lot of problems. And I think he needs to address it. Yeah. I think he needs to address it. And, and I do appreciate the individual making the comments. I yeah. do. Mm -hmm. Thank you for making those comments. And I agree with you. There's neither Jew nor Greek, nor Gentile, nor Jew mm -hmm. inside of Christ, mm -hmm. but that was not erasing ethnicity right what that was speaking to there is unity in the body not in the body not uniformity right. and that we shouldn't exclude people from the kingdom 
based on their race. Right. What's interesting is if somebody's being excluded from the kingdom, mm-hmm. we're making a pronouncement and a judgment on a person mm-hmm. who's professed to be a Christian and who's demonstrated that with their life, and we're making a profession about it. Yeah. So interesting. And and someone who's not here to, to defend, defend himself. Himself. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, absolutely. Uh, if 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 you were around, then why didn't you tell them then? <laughs> absolutely. Mm, let me stop. Yeah. So, <laughs> but we appreciate you. We really do. Thank you guys yeah. so much for joining Church Dropout. Uh, on our next uh, live stream, we're going to deal with the mega church. Mm-hmm. Mega church has mega problems. I will post a um, poll. A, a poll mm-hmm. uh, maybe tomorrow or something like that. Give you guys some opportunity to chat about it a little bit. We're just going to talk about. The issues that the mega church brings as it relates to discipleship within the community. We don't hate mega churches. We just think that there are other ways for people to find true connection with Jesus and with others. And a popular preacher mm-hmm. within the same camp, actually, hmm. as John MacArthur pointed out some discrepancies with the mega church. And we're going to talk about it. And so we want to just, yeah, have a good discussion about the church. And so, like always, thank you guys so much for. Uh, tuning in. Please like, rate, and subscribe wherever you, you're you listening at. Please comment. Keep the conversation moving forward. Keep it respectful. Mm-hmm. As always, we appreciate you. Love you. Thank you for tuning in to Church Dropout. God bless. Good night.